Up next, we sit down with Mer Lafferty for a short chat about podcasting, writing, and Star Wars. So welcome everyone to episode four of the Ozzy Osbourne Show. I'm your host, William J. Bruce III, and with me today by way of phone is Mer Lafferty. Mer, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, you're an award-winning author and podcaster. Um, how do you balance between the two? Well, usually I, I focus on one thing until the other thing starts to suffer, and then I panic, and then I go focus on the other thing until the first thing but I've been trying to get a little better about organizing my time. So um, ideally, yeah, I like to deal with uh, focusing one object on a different day of the week and then um, only give my focus to that one thing, but uh, still working on that juggling aspect of it. That's cool. That's cool. Um, how much time uh, per day do you do a lot for for writing and for podcasting? Um, you know, I, ideally it would be, you know, that, that podcasting and, and writing is all there is, but, you know, there's a lot of, um, admin stuff, email and everything. If it's just writing and podcasting, it would be, uh, like a couple hours a day writing and a couple hours a week podcasting, but, um, it's, it's. It always seems harder than that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay, so I'm going to touch more specifically on podcasting. So you're the winner of the Podcast Peer Award and three Parsec Awards. Um, congratulations on those, by the way. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, uh, first, I'll ask, how did you get into podcasting? Uh, uh, well, essentially, I had a friend tell me back in, I guess, October 2004 that he was uh, into this new podcasting thing, and I'd never heard of it and had no idea what it was. So I uh, asked him what it was and started doing the research and was really, really fascinated that it was it was so new at the time. You know, nobody was doing it, but the, but the potential for this medium was so large. So... Um, I toyed around with what I could uh, do for a podcast and started it up in December. And, of course, as a lot of people have discovered with podcasting, it's kind of a addictive thing. So by uh, the following August, I started my writing podcast because I realized I just wasn't talking enough into a mic, I guess. Okay. Um, so, like... You you were originally part of like Escape Pod and Pseudopod. How did you get into those? Well, I was um, I did some narration for Steve Ely and sold some stories to him okay. for Escape Pod. And when he said he wanted to branch out, um, I gave him some suggestions for a horror podcast, and he offered to he offered me the co editorship of it. And so I helped get Pseudopod off the ground, but unfortunately I was doing a few too many projects at the time. So um, I gave over full editorship to Ben Phillips at the time. Okay. Um, and then a couple of years later, they were looking for a new editor for uh, Escape Pod. Okay. And my projects had kind of calmed down at the time, so I said I would take it on and I did that for a couple of years and lately I've been doing the um, the evening for um, I stepped away from escape pod to focus on the evening um, mothership Zeta so we launched the escape artist evening a year ago oh yes it's so I've, I've been involved in many aspects of escape artists through the years it's a really great team of people. Okay. Now the 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 podcast you're involved with today um, are your own. Um, I should be writing, which uh, that that's for new writers. Yes. And that's where you've won your your awards. Is that correct? Yes. And then you've recently started a, a 
I guess, uh, sort of the next step up or the, uh, you know, uh, which is Ditch Diggers? Right. Uh, it, it, it feels recently, but actually it was a year, year and a half ago. It was last, uh, January in, uh, 2015. Okay. But, um, yeah, I, I wanted to talk about more. Well, see, I should be writing as a very, it's a very friendly, very supportive podcast. Okay. Um, for beginners. Right. And, but, you know, when it comes to the harsh realities of a creative career, um, sometimes you can't be so nice. And yes. I wanted to be able to talk about the realities of a writing career without the fear of uh, pushing people away or, right. or discouraging new writers. Right. So, um, I started the Ditch Diggers podcast where we talk about the business aspects of writing and it's, it's focused toward a more professional um, uh, audience or people who want to be more professional. Um, and it's, it, of course, I can't stop beginners from listening to it, but we talk about the things that go wrong and how professional authors can keep going after things go wrong and how, you know, professionals don't have the luxury of things like writer's block because, Hence the name, ditch figures don't get ditch figure block, so writers can't, working writers can't really afford writer's block. Very true. Okay, so we'll switch to your writing. Um, how many books have you written? Um, I've had, uh, three books published. The fourth one will be out in January. Okay. Um, and I've written several novellas and self-published them via podcast. Okay. Um, when, when did you get interested in writing? Well, I was pretty young. It was, I was very young. So, you okay. know, grade school kind of thing. Okay. Um, for the sake of those who are not familiar with your work, uh, can you share what, what genres your books and novellas are? Um, I do, uh, fantasy, contemporary fantasy. Um, my next book is science fiction. Um, I've done some are, I just kind of go all over the board. I usually have a thread of humor in my writing, sometimes more overtly than others. But, um, yeah, mostly just genre fiction with a thread of humor, but I try to go all over the place. Okay. Um, do you have any sort of like, um, routine or rituals to sort of help you to get writing? Uh, no, actually, I try not to because I worry that's going to be – that has the danger of turning into a crutch. Okay. Such as if I can't – if I don't have the right tea, I won't be able to work, or if I don't have – um, I mean, I want to be able to sit down in a in an airport during a, a layover and be able to write, and I don't want to have any sort of rituals that I need – that I find necessary in order to do that because then I wouldn't be able to just sit down and write if I had a free moment. So I actually try not to tie my writing to any sort of thing. I enjoy tea and coffee and uh, I listen to usually movie soundtracks with a lot of words, but overall uh, not a lot of ritual. Okay. That's, that's good advice. That's, that's very good advice. Um, how did your your first publishing deal come about? I did a uh, tried to find an agent and an uh, an agent for my book, and it didn't work out. So I finally did a podcast of the book, and the podcast did so well that I was actually approached by a small press saying they wanted to um, put the book out in print. Very nice. So. Uh, Actually, it was it was podcasting that got me my first book deal. Okay, very nice. Uh, what or who uh, influences your writing? Um, well, when I was a girl, it was the authors uh, Madeline Ingle, Anne McCaffrey, um, and Robin McKinley. And more as an adult, it's uh, Connie Willis and Neil Gaiman and China Mayville. Okay. The, the Shambling Guides, 
Um, mm-hmm. So your first one is, uh, it's actually, I understand there's a Netflix deal to have it made into a film. Yes, it's for, uh, Netflix got the rights to both of them. Wow. They okay. want the right to make either of those movies. Oh, okay. Whether they're, but Hollywood does this all the time. Right, They exactly. buy the right to all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And, um, it, it, I try to look at it as free money and not actually pin my hopes on it actually being made. Yeah. So, yeah, sure. uh, I don't get my heart broken. But of course, once, you know, once it's announced and people start talking about it, you of course want it to happen, but there's no guarantee that it'll okay. happen. For sure. For sure. So is there a potential for like, are, are you working on, on writing a, a third shambles guide? Uh, no, the, uh, publisher didn't want another one. Oh, okay. Um, it's really? not off the table. Okay. I don't have, uh, I, I, you know, have ideas for them, but I have other projects I need to be working on and the publisher didn't want to continue the series. Okay. Now I also noticed, uh, in some, some recent news, you had mentioned on your, uh, your podcast, um, Star Wars, uh, Rogue One, um, you're writing like, a an article or, or can, can you touch on that? No, I'm writing a short story in the universe. Okay. It'll be in, uh, the Star Wars Insider magazine this okay. winter. That's cool. That sounds exciting. Yeah. That was a very, very cool project. Yeah. Uh, how did, how did the Star Wars thing come about? Uh, my agent, uh, worked it out talking to, she knows the, uh, editor working on the Star Wars fiction and, um, got me a, uh, an offer for, to do a short story. So I talked to the editor and pitched her some ideas and she chose one that she wanted me to run with. So, um, that's how it worked. Very nice. Very nice. For your your Netflix deal, how did that come about? Um, again, it was it, it wasn't me. It was uh, my editor, uh, my agent. I think someone from Netflix called up my agent and asked about the rights. And so, when they found out it was available, they started working on an offer. So, it took a couple of months to hammer out all the details, and then. Two years passed before they wanted to announce it. So I guess oh, really? I sat on that secret for a long time. Wow, that's a long time to hold on to that. Wow. Yes. Wow. That had to be just burning. You had to just want to share that, eh? Oh yeah. Yeah, it was it was very frustrating. Wow. I don't know if I could do it. <laughs> I just when I think <laughs> I'd get to one point, I just like I'd just be blurting it out like, okay, I, enough's enough. Uh, well, you know, I told people who were close to me, and I just, you know, didn't talk about it online or didn't talk about it with anybody I didn't trust. But it was, uh, but there were people I could talk to. For sure. For sure. Um, okay, so your current projects, you have six weeks is coming out? It'll be out in January. Oh, six weeks. Sorry, six weeks. Yeah. Um, okay, that's cool. Um, for six weeks, uh, can you tell us what, what the story is about? Sure. It is a uh, clone murder mystery in space. Um, it, six clones are driving a generational starship, and in this world, cloning is used for a more immortality way of thinking than uh, multiplication. It's actually illegal to have more than one clone alive at a time, but you just you just bring a new clone back after you die. So they, these are the perfect people to drive a generation starship because it's same crew the whole time. Unfortunately, all six of the crew wake up in a vat one in their vats with their own dead bodies around them, and they don't know which one of them killed the others before they all woke up. So they have to deal with the fact that there is there may be a traitor on the ship. Figure out who killed whom, and um, it's a it's. A lot of flashbacks into previous lives and uncovering a lot of secrets. So it's kind of a locked door murder mystery with clones in space. What words of encouragement uh, can you give to those who are inspiring writers out there? Don't quit. 
Don't quit. Persistence really, really is the, the best thing to actually get you published. And, you know, someone who's really, really talented might quit. And if you're not, if you don't consider yourself really, really talented, but you don't quit, you have a better chance of getting published than the person who's really, really talented, but they quit. So, you know, I lost several years of my life just feeling bad about myself, not persisting and not writing. And I wish I could get those years back. But I just try to do it and just try to tell people, don't do what I did. Keep writing. Because every, every word you write gets you a little bit better. So there really is no reason not to keep writing if that's what you want to do. For sure. Okay. And uh, one final question, um, the Parsec Awards. Um, can you touch on, on what they are? Sure. Um, it was, gosh, 11 years ago, 12 years ago now? I can't even keep up. Um, there were lots of, as, as podcasting was getting larger, there were people doing lots of um, awards started to come up. Podcast okay. Peer Award, Podcaster Award, things like that. But nobody was paying any attention to either fiction or our little world of science fiction podcasting. Okay. So I talked to um, Michael R. Menenge of the Dragon Page podcast and Tracy Hickman, who's a fantasy writer, but who was uh, getting into podcasting. And he, uh, we thought about creating our own juried award focused on science fiction. So um, that's how the Parsec Award got started. And it was a lot of work to start out with and, I passed it off to more able people quickly, and they're doing an amazing job um, keeping it alive. And it's, it's something I'm very proud of, but I've done I, – I started it, but they've definitely been the ones to keep it going. So it's, um, it's a pretty awesome project. For sure. And it's given out every year at Dragon Con. Okay. Now, for those who want to find you, your, your website is merverse.com? That's right. And where else can can they find you uh, for social media? I'm most active on Twitter, okay. um, and I'm Mighty Mer on Twitter. Um, I'm on a lot of other social media, technically, but I don't really frequent many of them. So um, I'm not on Facebook, and uh, the other stuff I just don't think to post to. So Twitter really is the best place to engage with me, either that or email. Okay. Okay. I'm on Goodreads as well, but also very don't try to communicate with me on Goodreads because I almost never check the mail, and I feel bad. One time I found a, a interview request that was a year old. Oh, ouch! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like email is the best, but uh, <laughs> you want to find out about me, Twitter and uh, the website are the best way to go. Awesome. Okay, well, that's all for the, the time that we have today. Um, I just want to thank our guest, Mer Lafferty, for joining us on the show. And, thank you so much for having me. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mer. Hey, guys. Thank you for tuning into the Ozzy Osbourne Radio Show. For more episodes, you can check out OzzyOsbourne.com. That's A-U-S-S-I-E, Osbourne.com. God bless you.